What's up, everyone? How's it going? Google just released a 68 page paper on prompt engineering, and we're going to dive into it. I read through the whole thing. It's super good. It's a good balance of not too basic, but good for people who are just getting started, but also goes deep into a couple of different topics. So we'll link to it below. It's by Ali Boonsha. Um, and I think it does a really good job. Tons of good examples, goes over all the kind of important topics from parameters, prompting techniques, best practices, so on and so forth. And so we just put together a little outline of this on our blog, but we'll go through kind of what we thought was uh, was most important. We took all the example prompts that are in the white paper and they're uploaded in Prompt Hub as a group that you can go check out, experiment with, three to kind of mess around with, and we'll be mentioning a bunch of those throughout. So that'll be linked below as well. So it goes over all the model parameters. I think in particular, it does a good job of, of top P, top K, and temperature. And these are, I think, generally the hardest ones, I think, for people to maybe understand. Uh, you like struggle with like remembering which one's which. Top P, also known as nuclear sampling, selects a smallest set of tokens whose probability exceeds that threshold. So a lower value, it's between zero and one, because uh, it's, it's a percentage based thing. A lower value forces the model into a smaller, more predictable token pool. So you can think of it as a pool. You can either have access to a whole pool to pull tokens from, or you can constrain it to just a smaller portion of that pool. So higher value means more options for you know randomness and creativity. Top K, which isn't supported by all of the models, I don't believe. I know Google's, Google does. I don't think OpenAI does, but I'd have to double check that. It's a similar type of thing. It selects the highest probability of tokens before sampling. So you could say that basically instead of a percentage, you're doing like a fixed number. Give me the, you know, this top 10 likely tokens, the top 40. As you continue to increase the number of potential tokens that the model will think about using, it's gonna be more creative. So again, top P, think percentage, top K, think fixed count. And the temperature, which people are generally more, I think, aware of. Lower temperature values make the model more deterministic. Zero, it's essentially greedy. To coding, it's making the highest probability to token no matter what. And then as you increase that, it will flatten the distribution curve, include some kind of randomness. Different model providers have different ranges for this. Some are zero to one, some are zero, are zero to two. And the paper goes into the other ones, other parameters like max, to max tokens and stuff. I think this is like kind of the, the most important one and the hardest one to kind of maybe understand. In some sample presets, if you want to mess around with these, so if you want to like balance creativity, I think P, P of top P of 95, K of 30 and temperature, 0.2 makes sense. If you want like much higher creativity, you're going to boost up that temperature. You can kind of mess around with these too. Honestly, I feel like you could probably keep everything constant and just mess with one as a starting point. So maybe keep P and K like relatively constant. You can see these values that we're changing aren't changing too much for the top P and top K. Really, you can kind of mess around with temperature a lot to, to really tweak that creativity knob. Cool. And then it runs through all of kind of the basic prompting techniques, which we'll go through with some examples. So zero dot prompting, just basically sending the um, the description with no examples. And here is an example that they use. They use chain of thought here, but it's basically, hey, I have two brothers, they have three sisters. How many sisters um, do I have? So just, just the description, it's a task. One shot is when you supply one example. And we're including examples. You, of course, like the reason you're doing this is to show the model kind of Maybe the structure of the output you're looking for, how to reason about the problem, the tone and the style. So here's a math problem few shot where we see we're sending a question and an answer and then a question again. And then the model will pick up and answer this second question here. So that's a few, uh, few shot prompting, one shot and few shot are relatively similar. Again, we think this is probably one of the more powerful techniques, especially for showing output structure, tone, style, things along those lines. It's kind of like a show rather than trying to tell. System prompting, that's like high level kind of stuff you would have in your like system instructions or system message about the, what the model should kind of do generally at a very high level. So consistency, structure, safety, things along those lines is, yeah, so like acting as like a role, you know, which we'll talk, touch on a little bit, I think kind of over, overlaps with system prompting. So that's like an example there. Contextual prompting, to be honest, a lot of this kind of like merges together between system contextual and role, like there's a lot of overlap. Contextual, I think, is just much more specific. So while systems high level, contextual is much more specific. And then role prompting is like, in this case, the very specific aspect of assigning a persona um, or job title or some sort. Step back prompting, which we wrote about, 
you know, some time ago, maybe it's not necessary today as the models are like much smarter and better at reasoning. Although like, I still think it probably is pretty good. Essentially, you're asking the model to first kind of take a step back and think broadly about the problem and at like a high level and then feed that as context into the actual um, to solve the, the problem. So here's a question, abstract key concepts, use the abstractions to reason. So this does it in one prompt, but you could also do it in, in two. So we're gonna step back first and then use those abstraction to help answer the question. Chain of thought, classic, you know, think step by step. There's a bunch of different ways to elicit reasoning. We have a whole kind of collection of prompts and prompt tests around reasoning. You can kind of check that out below. Of course, this is not as necessary when you're using the a reasoning model. You don't need you don't need to do it all to do this because it's it's baked in. Because that's how effective it, we found it to be, right? Like that that's why the model providers have decided to put this directly into the time compute. Self consistency. Basically, you take a prompt and you run it a bunch of times. You pick the whatever one is the most uh, appears the most in the outputs. Whatever is the most uh, frequent answer. Tree of thoughts. You have a template and prompt up for this. Basically, you kind of instruct the model to explore reasoning paths while it's generating its output. It kind of does this now at the reasoning model, where you see like it can kind of start to go down a path. And we saw this with R one, where it can go down a path and be like, oh, it actually never mind. I don't want to do this and jump back out, or at least that's what it says it's doing. It's all a whole kind of controversy around like whether the reasoning is actually faithful. React is kind of like a, not framework, but a, a concept for using tools and agents, how agents should be con like interacting with users and tools throughout. And then automatic prompt engineering, also known as meta prompting, and we have a whole category and prompt of this whole bunch of, of prompts around that and a bunch of other resources we have. So we'll link those below. Next up, the best practices. So we took out whatever ones we thought kind of were most important. So high quality examples, still think prompt prompting has a huge value add here. There is research that reasoning models maybe perform not as well with, with the examples because it can be confusing. I think it's more of you don't, you can't provide like tons and tons of examples, but it's certainly something worth testing because the research is, is showing that a little bit. But again, it's like a show don't tell thing, which I think is, is super helpful. One thing to like keep in mind is that like if you are including like edge cases or like a bunch of examples is that you don't want the model to overfit on those examples such that when it sees a new like user message or another like something to actually process that it over it's kind of applies the example too much too strongly to what it actually has to solve so the only way to really mitigate that is to test a bunch starting simple you know the, the best prompt engineering advice is just concise and clear not that's for any type of model any provider, reasoning, non-reasoning, agent, non-agent, that is going to be like the number one, number one rule. Being specific about output is, is super important. You'd be surprised how many people kind of skip this step. Positive instructions over constraints. Generally, like this seems to be the, like the best practice. I've seen it kind of both ways, but you're saying, hey, do this rather than don't do this. To, to, to continually retest again, especially as you're changing models or, you know, models can kind of change without us knowing. So it's important to have, like I said, a B vowels or just, even if it's just the eye test to come back and test it yourself. Collaboration makes it super easy. Like I found that having someone come in after I've been working on a prompt, they're much, it's much easier for them to say, Hey, this makes no sense. I don't even understand this. So like having someone even just read the prompt and say, Hey, would you understand how to do this task? It's like a good gut check and then documenting the process, you know, tracking versions, configurations, performance metrics evaluations. Of course, we could do all of that in prompt up too, if you'd like. And we'll do a quick example. So we want to summarize a product announcement into three bullet points. We'll use kind of these best practices. So first, simply define a task. So generate three concise bullet points summarizing the following announcement. You could even get rid of this word concise. And we can see how that would work. Model parameters. You know, we want like a little creative. This is also kind of like a porting ish type stuff. So we want it to be accurate. Use chain of thought to guide the model through its reasoning because we're going to use like a 4 model or something along those lines, a non-reasoning model, and we'll use a one-shot example, which I think is the most important part of this prompt. This is why I took out that word concise before because the example is going to show the kind of length and format of these bullet points. So high quality example, show the format and tone we want, be specific about the out output format. We're doing three bullet points, positive instructions. We'll use variables just so we can like test this with other types of product instruments, and we're good to go. So this will be the link below if you want to mess around with it. But basically, pretty straightforward. Summarize the announcement three bullet points. Here's an example. And then we give the summary of the three bullet points. 
we give it, we tell it how to reason a little bit here. We're saying identify the features, distill them into bullet points. Here's an example, and then think step by step. The model will then insert its reasoning for the biggest features here, distill it into bullet points. Second, and iterate and test. That's really kind of <laughs> the uh, demo here with anything prompt engineering related. Is that you can take all these best practices and these methods, and they all sound great, but you won't really know until you're actually testing and trying things out. So. That's the takeaways. That's Google's prompting advice. I think it's super well done. Again, kudos to Lee and whoever else on this. It's really helpful when these providers try to give out some information um, around prompt engineering, as we saw last week with GPT 4.1's prompting guide that we went over. So yeah, that's it for today. And we'll see you in the next one.